Right, friends, today I got a story for you about a woman so stupid she thought Spotify was a stain remover. You see, she exposed herself. She gave herself away by giving details from a seance. Huh? I found a newspaper article about it. Let me read it out to you. Colleen Campbell arranged the murder of her former spouse and then exposed her involvement after a seance. You see, Colleen was 38 years old and she implicated herself by sharing graphic information about the injuries sustained by her ex-husband Thomas Campbell that would have only have been known by his killers. Apparently, four days after he was killed, she visited a clairvoyant. For those that don't know, a clairvoyant is someone that can tell the future. You know, if you watch the Conjuring films, Elaine Warren essentially. Love those films, by the way. At the spiritual meeting, she claimed Thomas was summoned by the clairvoyant and said he gave intimate details about both the killing and his injuries as she listened in. Let me say that again. She was with some woman, been doing some spooky stuff, and apparently her dead husband is talking to the clairvoyant, and the clairvoyant is telling Colleen what her dead husband is saying. Bro, a simple cup and string would have done, no? But Colleen then relayed the information to her ex-husband's mother, who alerted police to the bizarre conversation. Now, at the time of the seance, very little information was available about what happened to the husband. However, given everything she said, the police realized no one else could have known this except the killers. Inquiries revealed the mother of four had been tipping off the killers about her ex-husband movements in the run-up to the murder. Thomas, the victim, who was 36, he led a lavish lifestyle through drug dealing and laundering dirty money. Now, this is interesting. I'm going to read it out to you. This is what the newspaper said. He suffered 61 separate injuries. Okay, tragic, unfortunate. But then they go on to say, during an ambush at his £350,000 home in Greater Manchester, which is in the north of London. And it's interesting. Why mention the value of the home? Well, it must be a big home. It must be an expensive home. But £350,000? You know here just outside of Washington, D.C., you know what $350,000 a pound will get you? Yeah, barely a pot to piss in. And by the way, if you are liking this video, please subscribe. Uh, the links to my other channels are in the description. And also, follow me on Instagram. All the links are in the description. He was stabbed, tortured, and they poured boiling water on his ass. And I think this water was just there for, to inflict pain and to humiliate him. If you're going to pour boiling water on someone, you do it on their head. You don't do it on their ass, unless, of course, you try and take the piss. Neighbours found his body in the hallway, naked except for his socks. Now, Colleen was actually found guilty of manslaughter following a five-week trial. The sentencing judge, Mr. Justice Julian Goose, said Colleen Campbell, as the former wife of Thomas Campbell, was part of the planning and organisation for the robbery. She was aware of the use of a vehicle tracker, she provided important information about Thomas Campbell's movement, his vehicle details and where he lived. She was told that he was to be robbed and knew that violence would be necessary. But the question is, why? Why get your husband, at the time, robbed? What happened? You see, Colleen and Thomas initially became notorious over extravagant trips abroad funded by their family-run cocaine trafficking racket. Bro, they were drug dealers. The couple who married in 2011 were eventually detained in a police operation in 2018, which culminated in them admitting concealing criminal property. Colleen was given a suspended sentence, but Thomas was jailed for two years. After his release from jail, the couple split in 2021 when he started an affair with another woman. Cheeky bastard. Now, when the police conducted their investigation with this murder, they went through her phone and they found text messages that said this. Let me decipher this for you. You ready? She sent a text message to a friend saying, Best thing this man did was shag my baggy mate 12 months ago. Roll on new beginnings. If that's not a British text message, I don't know what is. She also sent another message. Let me read it out to you. Never let the actions of a man that cannot be loyal to his own family and a woman with no morals and has to sleep with other women's husbands change and provoke you karma is best served cold and then tables turn real fast i be the coldest mf you ever met ha <laughs> you're hard ain't you love muppet 
And then there was a little twist. So she found out that he's having an affair. Okay, it happens, right? But the woman he's having an affair with has a boyfriend by the name of John Belfield, who I can confirm is a bell end. However, he is also a drug dealer. He finds out about this affair. He and Colleen team up and they decided to rob Thomas of his cash, drugs and valuables in a raid of his house. You know, the pot to piss in. In fact, this aforementioned Bellend, he sent a text message to his girlfriend and he said, you and that helmet will get domed. <laughs> you will never have a boyfriend. You will have to move country. Give it a week and you will see why and what happens when you take the piss. Why would I respect you getting shagged of Tom Campbell? And that's interesting. Why would I respect you after getting shagged of Tom Campbell? So if she shagged, I don't know, Alistair Darling, does that mean he'd respect it? Later, Belfield met up with Colleen after messaging her on Instagram. And despite previously being strangers, they subsequently shared 35 phone calls and 68 messages. 35 phone calls? I don't even know 35 people. She shared key information about her ex, including details of his van's registration plate, his house number, and his movements, and a tracking device was placed in the vehicle while Thomas was picking his daughter up from school. And it was on July the 2nd, 2022, that Thomas was ambushed and attacked by two or three men as he unlocked his front door. After being subdued, he was dragged around his house and viciously attacked. The court heard, Colleen went to see the clairvoyant four days later. Thomas's mother, Lynn Campbell, said in a statement, Colleen told me she had visited a psychic. Sorry, ma'am, that wasn't a psychic. It was a bullshit artist. The mother went on to say, she told me that Thomas had come through during her visit to the psychic and asked her to come to my house. She said he had told her these lads had hurt him and done something to his face. It was over a girl or girls. While she was saying these words, Colleen gestured with her hands across her cheek. I told her I don't want to know and told the police about what she said. And it does make me wonder why go to the mum and tell her about the psychic or clairvoyant. Maybe she's trying to make the mum feel better about the death of her son. Who knows? She said there were only two people involved in the incident, not three, and they were still in the country. Colleen then told the mother that Thomas has said he wasn't bothered about dying young as he had lived a full life. The mother did not see Colleen after this conversation and hasn't seen her since. Now the prosecutor, Mr. Nicholas de la Poix, I don't know if I said that correctly, let me read it out to you. He said, at this stage, the police had not revealed to the public the injuries of Thomas. So this information could have only come to Colleen Campbell if she came in contact with the attackers. The telephone evidence demonstrates that she spoke to John Bellend within hours of attack ending. The prosecutor's case is that this is information that John Bellend gave her, probably before Thomas had been declared dead by paramedics. Colleen denied any wrongdoing. Silly cow. So a man by the name of Reese Stephen, who was one of the attackers, he was convicted of murder and was jailed for life with a minimum of 37 years. You also had Stephen Cleworth, who was 38 years old. He was also found guilty of manslaughter and jailed for 12 years. As for Bellend, who the police learnt is heavily involved in Class A drugs, he's currently on the run in Spain somewhere. I can only imagine how the father feels. Thomas's brother Daniel said, During the days after Thomas was killed, well-wishers were coming to pay their respects and offering to help, but there was one visitor who we welcomed with open arms and it has haunted us ever since. He goes on to say, and let me read it out to you, when Colleen Campbell appeared at my mum and dad's front door, after the news was passed, we thought nothing of letting her in and consoling her as much as we possibly could. She sat in my mum and dad's house, surrounded by Thomas's closest friends and family and expressed how much she was upset. She shared stories about how great the marriage was and how she still loved him. Every single one of my family has hugged her and tried to make her feel better. All along, Colleen knew she was part of the plot and she made this happen. He ends his statement by saying, knowing we hugged her and spent time with her during the worst time of our lives has added an extra burden, an unimaginable pain. 
she has shown no remorse. She concealed her involvement and she watched us all hurt. So, Colleen, this moronic Spotify stain remover, was eventually sentenced to 13 years in prison. She was found guilty of manslaughter. But in reality, what actually happened, you have a woman who's a bit crackers, you can tell, right? She's got a few screws loose. She finds out her husband is having an affair. Have a look at the lifestyle. Drugs, parties, holidays, right? They, he was in jail for two years. She's obviously been questioned by police over the years. I can only imagine the tumultuous relationship they had. But the crux of the story is jealousy. She found out he was having an affair, but she may have let it go. I also think Mr. Bellend, who's still on the loose, probably um, confronted her and said, no, we got to fix this. We got to deal with him. We got to rob him or whatever. And then she had, had the idea stuck in her head. She then gives that information to him. And here we are. So do you think 13 years is long enough? Comment. Tell me what you think.